Hey everyone, today's video is going to be a little bit different. Usually I'm, I'm making videos on like real world issues and stuff, you know, on technology and whatnot, but for this video, I just want to talk about my experience with my te technological detox and tell you what I experienced, realizations I came to. I want to talk about some of the some of the stuff I went over in this journal. I'm not gonna like specifically talk about my life, but just kind of like general stuff that I was realizing. And here I want to talk about this book, which was give it gifted to me by a guy I know at the gym. His name is. Kevin. I'll I'll censor that if he doesn't let me use his name. But this book is really interesting. Uh, it taught me, it has a lot of good lessons in this. It taught me a pretty good amount. So I'm going to start off by just going over the purpose, right? Like what was, like what the point of this was. The, the point of this technological detox was to come to, to answer three questions, right? And I have them written down in this journal, actually. Okay, so I just spent like f three minutes looking. Here, here are the questions. What do I want? So like, these are all regarding purpose. What do I want? Who do I want to be? And what am I willing to do? Those are the three main questions that I was trying to answer with this um, self introspection, right? So that was mainly the point. I wanted to under I wanted to understand myself better. And, you know, obviously it goes without saying we have all this technology and all this, this content that's like distracting us and keeping us focused on things other than ourselves. The whole point was just to get away from it and then look inward. Regarding my experience, Monday was when this book was given to me. And so I want to talk about what this book taught me first. And I'm actually going to read some of it to you because I have these little, um, and do by the way, you guys should do this when you get books. I don't know if you can see that, these little marks. These marks are folds in the page. I don't know, wait. I was a page off. Here. These marks are folds in the page so that I know where to go. Right? They're like bookmarks for key moments and parts of the book that I like. It was actually someone that showed me that. But anyway. I want to first refer to a conversation with the um, with the shepherd boy and the old king. To summarize this book, there's basically a shepherd. They call his name is Santiago, but they call him the boy throughout the whole thing. And he gets a vision, or he gets like a dream, and there's a treasure in at the Egyptian pyramids. And so he goes on this journey and then it, as soon as he about to give it up, there's like a bunch of people that tell him about purpose and whatever, how he has to keep going and omens and all that. So during this conversation with the old king, he's about to give up his purpose. And this old king, basically, he's the king of uh, Melchizedek or Melchizedek. I don't know how ever say he's a biblical figure, right? And so supposedly God sent him to go talk to, to this boy. And so they have this conversation. And then eventually, and here I have, I put a bookmark for one of the, one of the most important lines in this conversation. And when you want something, all the universe conspires in helping you to achieve it. And there's actually another line right uh, right before it. To realize one's personal legend is a person's only real obligation. All things are one. Those are two separate sentences, but I believe that they're equally as important. A personal legend is basically one's destiny, right? It's pretty clear from that sentence that he's saying that that's our only obligation. That's the only thing that a human must do, right? It's the only thing that we should concern ourselves with understanding who we are and who we want. When he says everything, I think he said everything is one and the same, right? I believe so. He said everything is one and the same. Yeah, all things are one. 
So he's referring to the interconnected uh, interconnectedness of everything. Because in this, another theme that is repeated through this book is that everything is written by the same hand. This hand is supposedly God. And so we ought to love every single thing, right? We, we ought to accept and understand the world around us, the events that happen to us, right? And then the, the line uh, that the universe conspires in helping you achieve whatever you want to achieve. I think that's so important because we, oftentimes we have things that happen to us that deter us or seemingly deter us from our goal. And then that sort of dissuades us and oftentimes we let it, we let it beat us, right? We let it, we let it abuse us. And so we end up giving it up or postponing it being scared of potential consequences. And so that only happens because people don't realize that when they really desire something and not just material, right? Not just when they want money, but when they actually desire something from deep within, they feel that this is what they're inclined to do. The universe helps them in achieving it because again, a person's uh, realizing uh, your personal legend is your only obligation. So the universe is gonna help you when you have something to achieve, even if it doesn't seem like it at times, right? There's realizations you're gonna come to. There's things that are gonna happen to you that bring more of a mental progression at times, more than like a physical actual step forward. You know what I mean? And there's another line from this book that helped me, that I find the most valuable compared to, or equally as valuable as the conversation with the old king. So for, for context, the boy met, has met the alchemist by this point, and these tribesmen in the desert stop them because there's like a war going on. And, they're at, and they ask them, what are you guys doing here? And one of them searches the bag and then finds the Philosopher's Stone, the Elixir of Life. And then he asks him, what is this? And so the alchemist responds, that's the Philosopher's Stone and the Elixir of Life. It's the masterwork of the alchemists. Whoever swallows that elixir will never be sick again. And a fragment from that stone turns any metal into gold. The Arabs laughed at him and the alchemist laughed along. They thought his answer was amusing. And they allowed the boy and the alchemist to proceed with all their belongings. Are you crazy? The boy asked the alchemist when they had moved on. What did you do that? What did you do that for? To show you one of life's simple lessons, the alchemist answered. When you possess great treasures within you and you try to tell others of them, seldom are you believed. That little response to him right there, uh, where he shows him one of life's simple lessons and he tells him that. When you have knowledge, people just don't believe you, right? And this is this is something that I took a, a little bit, a long time to accept, right? Before reading this book, it's like I, nobody's ever clearly stated that to me. And I've always sort of accepted it. But I've always been angered by it. You know, I've always been frustrated by it. But now, like after reading this and introspecting on it, like I don't really care. Right, people want to listen. People don't want to listen. You can't you can't force people to open their minds to you. That's not how that works. You know, people have to seek the knowledge, and you have to give it to them. You can't make people want it. You can't make anybody want anything. That's this is why a, a totalitarian governments don't work, and that's a point that I argue. You know, I'm always arguing against totalitarian governments and corporate authority, whatever. The all of them are trying to do the same thing. They're trying to get people to want stuff, to, to want what they want, or not to want what they want, but to want the system that they want. And that you just, you can't do that. That's not how human psychology works. Human, like, we, we don't work like that, right? And so, that helped me realize that 
sometimes like you just can't be you can't incessantly just fight the same person to know and know and know like there's a person in my friend group who i'm not gonna name but whenever i talk about like these sorts of subjects immediately she starts like laughing and then like trying to get away from it right and it, at first that like really frustrated me because i'm like dude what do you why like why are you refusing to open your mind refusing to improve your own condition because it, it seems a little stupid to you because nobody ever talked to you about this and you know it actually it really bothered me for when i like when i say bothered it bothered me right for a few days i was just like dude this person is so fucking ignorant but you know after after reading this, after getting an understanding of that, of the fact that you're not really believed in regards to, and to, in regards to not just that, but really anything, right? People are always skeptical towards what anyone has to say. So that helped me accept ignorance a lot. It helped me to see it, attempt to fix it. If it doesn't work, okay, whatever. I'm going to move on, right? So that's this book. This book, uh, I finished it Monday. It was, it was, it was good. It was good. I liked it. I, re I, I haven't reread it. I will eventually, but right now my focus is on other things. So anyway, now we get into the more like, self-introspection this is some of my most extensive journaling you know that i mean that was the plan right so i'm not going to read everything but i'm just going to give you like the general gist of of some of these realizations that i came to so the first question i ask myself is what do i want right and so i i was talking about how there's this one thing I want, but there's also this other thing that I want. One of them is my true intention. And the other one is something that I think I want. And so I need to define clearly which is which. Because if not, I'm going to spend my life working towards both simultaneously. And that's not going to work. That's going to result in me being unhappy. Because one of these is genuine, the other is not right so that was the main question that i got that i was asking and I'd also i i like to uh say this before i um continue talking about these realizations or whatever when you do this right because i, I imagine that you're you're clicking on this video to get an understanding of it so that you can do it yourself when you do these introspections right i like there's no technology during the week I mean, absolutely none. Unless you get a call from your mother or somebody important, you don't turn your phone on for anything. You leave your phone off, you leave your computer off, everything off. You use the least amount of technology, right? Even, th even things like light and, and water. Like, obviously not drinking water, but tap water, right? You use these things as minimally as possible. And you, you just, you sit in your room for hours at a time and you think that's, that's sort of the, that's the format of this detox. It's sitting in, in your room or outside majority of the day, if not all day, just asking yourself uncomfortable questions that you haven't been asking yourself questions that you need to ask yourself. So back to these realizations. Here in this first one, I'm coming to the realization that maybe what I think I want isn't what I want. And that's really important because most people suffer from this, right? Most people suffer from thinking that they want something, but in reality, there's a bunch of layers behind it. It's not that they, it's an intrinsic desire of their nature. Rather, it is a bunch of ideals that over time from childhood society is implanted into this person's head 
And so now they have this desire at, at the core of their heart, but then all these like layers of grease around it. And so they, they never, they can't get to the core, right? Because they have all these things, all these layers covering it. And they end up spending their lives chasing, let's say university, right? They want to go, they think they want to go to college, but they don't want that. They don't care about college. They're going to college because their parents told them to, because their parents wanted to do that, but their parents failed. And so they want to see themselves succeed through their kid. And that's a normal thing, you know, to want to see your kid succeed. But wanting to see your success through your kid is different because then you start implanting your desires into his head and your desires aren't necessarily his desires, right? So when a parent tells somebody, okay, yeah, yeah, go to college and get a good job and, and, and become a doctor, let's say he does all that. He's not going to feel fulfilled. He's not going to feel... He's not going to feel like there's any purpose to his life because he spent he spent it he spent his whole life working towards this thing that he not he doesn't necessarily he might not necessarily disagree with it but it just isn't him it's not what something that he believes in right and so here I was coming to the realization that maybe what I think I wanted isn't what I want that it isn't something true to myself and maybe it's an external desire implanted into me and I and I think that even now right but even if you plan to take a psychological detox right now just ask yourself you don't you don't have to write or anything you could save that for like the week but it if you're not gonna do that whole detox I suggest you write it down just ask yourself what is it like what is it that I want from that question alone, you're going to have to consider a lot of uncomfortable circumstances, especially if you've lived more life doing the thing that you don't want to do. The questions are going to become significantly more, the, the more you allow the, a fake desire, right, or an artificial desire to dictate your life, the more you will feel uncomfortable asking this question. And that's good. Because that means that it's working. And once you once you find the answer to this, once you can answer whether or not your desires are planted or true, you can decide everything else after that. You can decide where you want to move on, where, or where you want to move in life next, right? Other thing that this self-introspection helped me to answer was... Stuff that I wasn't content with within myself, right? So I, because I, I've numbered these, right? So I don't know if you could see that up there. That's a self-introspection too. But this also says introspection too. But these are actually separate, right? I believe so. Yeah, yeah. They're different. Even though I've titled them the same thing. And they're on the same day. They're about two different things. So this first page, right, is about my complacency. The fact, because I, I was beginning to notice that in regards to my stoicism, my philosophy, my the adherence to my own rules, and that's really important. I'll talk about it right now in this section. Um, I was lacking. I just, I, I was following the rules of others before I followed my own rules and I wasn't control I wasn't in as uh in control of my emotions as I wanted to be as I want to be so here what, like when you journal in general the point isn't to just call yourself an idiot and then close the journal and be like mm, yeah I journal wow that was such a good journaling session the point is you have to point out the flaws within yourself that you like to fix and the flaws that you pick must be flaws that you believe are within yourself it can be flaws that other people are telling you you have right they may be right so i'm not i'm not telling you don't to not consider what they're saying because they may very well be telling the truth if somebody says hey you're kind of like an asshole you know you're always uh you're you're very boastful whatever the criticism may be don't just ignore it 
right? And be like, oh, well, you can't decide that for me. I got to introspect first and then decide if, if that's a conclusion I can come to. Because some people are going to notice things that you don't notice. Other people are going to see your behavior more... Your behavior is more out there, I guess is the best way to put it. When other people are observing you compared to when you observe yourself. Or not when you observe yourself, but when you just live life, right? Because very few of us are walking around constantly observing ourselves unless we have like an insecurity or anxiety or whatever. We're never really like constantly fixated on what we're doing. And a lot of times, especially when in social flow, or not in social flow, but within in social interaction, our behavior is just automatic, right? So people pick up on our behaviors faster than we do sometimes. So don't just throw their, don't think, oh, they don't they don't know me. They don't know what they're talking about. Consider it. Think about it. Think if maybe they're right. Introspect on it. Take advantage of of that moment. If you uh, in this book, uh, I refer, I was referring to it earlier, The Alchemist. In this book. They refer to omens a lot. And I'm not necessarily a believer in God. But if you want to, if you believe in omens, take it as an omen. Take it as a sign that you need to introspect on it. That the, that the universe has sent you an opportunity to improve your character. But as I was saying earlier, the point of these journals is not just to self-deprecate and say, Oh yeah, well I suck at this and this and this and this. And then, okay, yeah. The point is, observe the flaws that you have, or that you think you have, that you'd like to fix, and then attempt to come up with solutions. Attempt to uh, find, try to find a way to begin fixing it, actually. That, that's a better way to put it, because you're never going to... There's very few times, and I'd almost like to say never, that you're just going to... you're gonna notice a flaw within yourself and instantly fix it in the same day that's very unrealistic especially when it comes to the development like if it's just a part of your character it takes time it takes time to rewire you to change you and again don't change you for the sake of others because then it results in inauthenticity the whole point of this the whole point of asking what your purpose is the whole point of introspecting the whole point of journaling and doing all this shit the point of it is to become more authentic to your true nature it's to become more real don't want don't do this like notice a flaw and be like okay well this is actually better and then the improvement you come up with is simply to make other people happy right don't don't think of changes that are going to make others happy before they make you happy that's it's not fair to yourself Right, and honestly, I believe that it's a, that's a lack of self-respect. That was this first page. Now we move on to the to this one, to the the second self-introspect too, which was the other page where I asked one of the three main questions. And here I'm attempting to answer who I want to be. The reason this is of importance is because outlining who you want to be is going to help you decide the path that you're going to take. Right, it's gonna. It it almost dictates the places you go in life, right? If I want to be someone of discipline, someone of of incredible willpower, somebody who just has an unbreakable spirit, I'll go to like a fighting club. If I want to be a great mind, if I want to be somebody who has an unbreakable intelligence, does that make sense? But somebody who's incredibly intelligent. I go to like a philosophy club or something. So no understanding who you want to be is also in part going to help you decide where you want to go. And where you want to go and who you want to be are sort of, they're pretty correlated. Because oftentimes in order to achieve what you want, you need to be a, a specific type of person. So you are going to end up becoming that person in order to achieve this. You understand what I'm saying? I, ho I, I hope that makes sense. I believe it does. But anyway, here, I'm simply outlining who I want to be. I'm like, oh, it's not difficult. I want to be this, 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 and this. And then I talk about how I can achieve this. I talk about the way that I'm going to that I'm gonna get to that, to that level that I want to get to. It's important that you never just outline the goal and then you stop there. 
especially when you're introspecting because not only are you gonna stop you're gonna hurt your future self because now you've left the burden of finding the answer to that on his hands maybe it's for the better right maybe your current self doesn't have enough experience and you need more experience to be able to to understand what you have to do but always attempt to find somewhat of an answer right and if you don't know just say it just write it down i honestly don't know what i have to do yet so that's that and then that was actually it for that uh for self-introspect too it was just the two separate pages about like separate topics and now we move on to self-introspect three of course there was some like regular journaling in the middle of this but like for important information right like so regarding like flow state and all that stuff things that i was that i was already doing to help achieve my goal so now we move on to i believe the most important ones or sort of the most important ones self-introspect three and self-introspect four they're both one page they're actually on the same page but on uh the other both sides so here i was talking about my disappointment and frustration with my own hypocrisy right i was talking about and i whenever you do this right whenever you make judgments of yourself don't do it how i did it here don't just insult yourself because this is going to achieve nothing right I'm not really hurt by my own insults. Like, I really don't give a shit. But there are many people who it will get into their head, even if it's them, even if it's them, especially if it's them saying it to themselves. They're writing it down. They open the journal to get some advice. And then they, they see all these self-deprecating lines. These, like, these statements that are just insulting to the self. And that wears their spirit down, right? It's like, oh, dude, well... And then eventually they just stop opening the journal because they associate opening the journal with being insulted. And we don't like being insulted, so they stop doing it. But anyway, the point is, I was very frustrated with my own hypocrisy. Uh, there's a moral theory video that I'm going to, I don't know when I'm going to post it, but it's going to be a, a while, right, until that com comes out. But the point is, I've already outlined, like, what the sh what strength and weakness is and i i say here i am weak and this is what anyway don't insult don't insult yourself but what i was meaning here was that because of my own hypocrisy i was exemplifying traits of weakness and so right after i come up with this solution or i come up with the idea that i need to spend an entire day just meditating writing and that's it no food no water no technology no nothing and so is that's what leads into uh, self-introspect four, which happens the day after, I believe. Yes. Where I, I ask, and this is where I ask, what am I willing to do? This is on a Friday. So on Saturday, what I did was, I'll, ju I'll just write, uh, say everything that was on the list. So tomorrow or after tomorrow, whichever works best, I will work out, sit in the room or garden with this journal, skip eating skip drinking skip using bathroom if possible stay up all night if possible meditate and self-introspect either on journal or just to myself the following day will be active rest recover and replenish so here the reason i say this is so important because i did this right and they're supposed to be my I was anticipating that there was a self-introspect five, right? Where I was outside, but I ended up not bringing my journal, right? Or not writing in my journal. I just sat there doing nothing. And there's two things. There, there's, there's a few things that I want to say about this, right? Firstly, don't do what I did, which was I, I sit in my room and I don't do anything at all. I don't like... I think I should I should have started writing, right? Because that would have that would have kept me. That would have kept me thinking. Would have had me doing something, and I would have lasted for longer. But I I ended up waking up at I believe five or six a.m. 
and then going without food with no water up until 1 a.m. 1 p.m. And throughout this time, all the self-introspection was in my mind, right? I was always, I, w I wasn't thinking of anything. I was just meditating and then focusing on asking myself uncomfortable questions. Do you realize that a lot of the stuff that you've, you, you come to realize that most of the stuff that you've been like, that you've been trying to achieve, most of the stuff that you thought you knew, you don't know any of it. And you're really not as experienced as you think you are. The point of this question and the point of that of this day, Saturday, was mainly just to experiment, to see what limits you're willing to push yourself to if it's regarding your purpose and your mission. Because many people will, they will simply say, and this may even be you, right? I know it certainly was me. I would say that I'm gonna do this and this and this and this, but then when the moment comes, I don't do any of it because in the moment is different from anticipating the moment, right? It's, it's different from sitting comfortably in your chair and then fantas fantasizing about the moment that you get into a fight and you just, you have, you land all the perfect hits and you, and you block everything perfectly and, you know, everyone's cheering for you, whatever. Like those delusions that we make of ourselves, that we can just handle a situation without even without any experience this is something that all of us go through and so or at least i think all of us go through maybe there's some people who just you know they're humble from from childhood but humble enough from childhood right and they've reached that level of humility but the point is most most of us sort of overestimate and we also underestimate but a lot of us i think the majority underestimates but the but in my case i overestimate it i overestimate how much i'm going to be able to do at any given moment and so that's what this day was for it was like okay prove it prove that this is what you're willing to do there's nothing that was stopping me from not eating nothing that was stopping me from not drinking not using the bathroom not sleeping, nothing that was stopping me from doing that. So if I ever failed, the blame was only ever gonna be on myself because it was my inability to do what had to be done. Of course, I don't mean to say this in a way that go do dangerous stuff, right? I don't do this in a dangerous way. Uh, the next day, this is why I wrote in the journal specifically that the next day was going to be specifically, I wouldn't even work out. It was going to be specifically for recovery and replenish. So I was going to get up, I was going to eat, and that's what I was going to be doing the whole day. I was going to eat and write and whatever else I had to do. I was, I was still going to be productive, but it was going to be a lot of eating and a lot of sleeping because, I mean, it goes without saying, I just, I spent the whole previous day not hydrating, not eating not sleeping, not even using the bathroom, if possible, obviously. In, in regards to the physical effects, right, in regards to what I actually f physically went through, I've noticed that I was, a lot of I was able to get into flow state easier afterwards, right? So this is the following week after I did this, I've been able to get into flow consistently with my, or I'm starting to be able to get into flow consistently with my Muay Thai and my, and my writing scripts. My focus has improved. I'm able to, like right now, I'm completely just focused on this video. I'm not even thinking of anything else. I'm present in the moment. I'm not even thinking of the next word, right? So I, I noticed that my focus improved, my social flow improved. I was able to listen to people talk without having to interrupt and be like, no, 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 actually you're wrong. I didn't have to start thinking of my response before they finished. I was able to just look them in the eye and wait until they're finished. I noticed that I was getting more stuff done in the day than I previously was. And also regarding productivity, right? Don't be productive just because these online and like influencers and influencers and entrepreneurs tell you to be productive because that's the biggest waste of your time ever sometimes being too productive is 
counter is counterproductive because you end up overworking yourself and overexerting yourself that you forget other fundamental aspects of life. So your physical health, right? Your psychological health, your social life, not, not just friends. I don't mean like those fake friends that you don't like that have nothing to do with you. That if you speak about something like this, they're going to look at you like you're crazy. I don't mean those friends. I mean, real friends, like brothers and sisters, your girlfriend, your boyfriend, your mother, your family, your social life with them, your relationships with them is essential. You need to have connection. We're, we're social animals. We need human connection. We need connection with something, right? Even if it's with an even if it's with an animal, right? We need to have like friendship at least with some with something. But obviously, you can't talk to a dog and have him understand you unless you're a fucking a witch or something. But being too productive can result in the opposite effect of what you're, it can result in the opposite of what you're trying to achieve. So just note that that. Being productive doesn't mean having a bunch of things on your to-do list and then crossing them all off, being overexerted, and then being like, oh yeah, finally, I get to sleep and I get to stop doing this shit. Because then you end up loathing whatever you're doing. And if you loathe it to begin with, it's probably not what you want. It's probably not what you should be doing. A lot of people, again, a lot of people will implant these desires in your head that you need to... Uh, be a YouTuber, you need to be an entrepreneur, you need to be this or that. Some people, if you don't want that, if you don't want to do those things, don't do it. Right? The life, the moment you become a slave is the moment that you allow others to influence the direction you take. Once you, because again, th this is you, right? Your desires are here. They're, in, they're within you. They're inside of you. They're a part of you. Here comes this other person with their ideas. This is their idea, but and they've influenced you. So then their desire gets added to this to this layer, to this core desire. But it, it doesn't become the desire. Instead, it masks over it. You still want to do what you originally wanted to do. But now you have this other artificial desire that was placed onto you. And you're like, okay, yeah, this is what I want to do. So if you end up working towards the artificial goal, right, instead of the core desire, you end up being unhappy with your life. And there's many people who kill themselves because they spent their whole lives wasting their time simply because people told them what to do and they just listened because they didn't know what else to do. They never sat down and asked themselves, what do I want? What do I need? Right, because direction and purpose is something that we need. It's not just something that we simply desire. It's, as this book says, a person's only real obligation. When we, and you know, we can get into the discussion of whether it's, it's God that gives you this purpose, whether it's just natural, whether it's an innate desire within the conscious life to do something, whether it be, it be a genetics or upbringing, whatever. The point is, Having direction is essential to happy life. Without understanding what you want to do, where you want to go, you might be one of these people who become a statistic. And I know that that sounds like, oh, no, no, that, that can never be me. That, that's impossible. But there are so many people who think the same thing. And then 10, 20, 30 years later, they're sitting in their room unhappy with their lives. They have a woman who they don't like. They have a job that they hate. Only thing keeping them in that situation is the fact that their kids are there. But even then, they, he had kids with a woman who he doesn't really like. He's unhappy. He's always been he's been working his whole life towards this goal that wasn't even his. He's a doctor, but he's not a doctor because he wanted to help people. He's a doctor because society told him to be that, and so he spends his grueling work shifts doing something he hates, and now he's considering killing himself. Or abandoning everything. He's, he's genuinely considering suicide for the first time in his life because he's so unhappy. And this is, this is what purposelessness does to the human mind. It creates this inevitable spiral of depression that leads to, if not suicide, suicide is pretty extreme, but 
if not suicide, it leads to outbursts of, of, of emotion, of anger, of sadness, inability to focus, increased stress, which then results in all the things, weight gain, less hormonal health, poor sleep, everything. Higher blood pressure, which goes without saying affects your health. All these things because you never ask yourself, what do I want? People will tell you that, and I'm not, I'm not saying that your your desire has to be, because many of you will, will hear this and they'll be like, oh, well, isn't that pretty selfish? You know, I, I don't think so, right? It, it's selfish to say, oh, I want to make a bunch of money and then you exploit people to make that money. But in regards to what you want, I'd say it's essential. It's self-respect, right? And there's nothing, there's nothing egotistical about sitting in your room and saying, I want this. And then when somebody comes with this other desire, you say, no, I actually don't want that. Nothing egotistical about that. Nothing narcissist about it. So yeah, my focus improved, my awareness improved. All right, I was picking, I picked up on social cues faster. My presence incre in increased. Presence is super important, by the way. I'm gonna show you right now, actually. I have this thing, which has like all my goals on it or whatever. This, um, one of my short-term goals is stay present because presence is one of the most important abilities you can obtain in your life. The ability to stay in the moment. So many people live their lives, even in their intimate moments, right? When they're, when they're like having sex with, with their woman or they're just, they're speaking to their mother. They're having a conversation, whatever the case, their mind is drifting onto other things. They're thinking of other stuff and Lack of presence results in lack of ability to feel, lack of ability to respond accordingly in, an, in a natural way. It inhibits your ability, or not inhibits, it prohibits, it prohibits you from getting into flow. And so staying present is one of the, staying present is one of the most important things you can do. And I think the last thing, the last realization that I came to, or the last thing that I accepted, right, was that everything was going to take a long time. Every, all of this is a, is a, a long process. And, you know, I'm expecting changes to my character or whatever. It's not going to happen tomorrow. Not even in three, six, not even at the end of this year, probably. I'm still going to be struggling with this. Eventually, I'll get it. I do believe I will because it's what I want. And as this book says, and, and when you want something, all the universe conspires in helping you to achieve it. That's that line. So I'm going to keep struggling because I know that since I really want it, there's going to be stuff there that's going to help me achieve it. Even if it's sent, even if it's not God that sends it, even if it's not nature, what, whatever it is that sent that is helping me, it's help. And I'm going to take it. And that help is going to arrive because... I'm on, I'm doing the thing that I was born to do. But yeah, it's going to take a while. It's not going to be a fast process. And I've accepted that, you know, I've, I've, I've accepted it for a while. I've known it for a while. That like, this isn't, this is nothing short, but now I'm beginning to, I, I'm beginning to understand, you know, like truly understand that this stuff is no short process and you can't rush it either because then you just you sacrifice your own well-being you sacrifice your, your own progress you try to take two steps forward and fall back five you know so anyway that's going to be it for this video i don't believe there's anything else i have to say there's not much uh i'm not gonna obviously the contents in the journal itself are personal but I believe I've done a good job at giving you just like a general gist of the stuff I learned, of the things that you should be considering. And yeah, there's a, a video coming out soon. It's, it's more like a video essay more than just a video.
I think it's going to be pretty long, but I'm pretty excited for it. I have a lot of, um, not a lot, but I have sort of, like, bigger ideas for videos that I want to make, like, more in-depth, important subjects. It's why I'm considering, I'm still considering this, moving to monthly uploads and, or daily uploads. Because for those, like, longer length videos, it goes without saying, I need more time. Not only just, not only to to write the script and make it, but to research it properly, right? If I want to make something on, like, let's say, school, I need to study a lot of them in regards to the history of the education system, possible improvements on the education system, theories on the education system. I need to educate myself a lot. So that education requires time, right? But anyway, hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, that's it for this video. Goodbye.